is John with Chest Freezer Cold Plunge and this video is part three of a three-part series on keeping the water clean in your chest freezer cold plunge. In the previous videos, first of all, we gave you an overview of what it takes to keep your water clean, the three things. If you haven't seen that yet, I encourage you to go watch that one. The second video in the series was about pumps and filters to keep your water clean or to help keep your water clean. And the third part is on sanitation. Because there's a lot of information to share with sanitation, I broke this down into two subparts, part A and part B. The part A was going over chemicals. That was the previous video. If you haven't seen that, go ahead and watch that, please, before you jump in here. This is the second part of the third video, which is on technology that you can use to keep your water clean. We'll be talking about ozone generators and UV lights. We're gonna go over what to use and what not to use. So let's get started. UV or ultraviolet uh, can work if you get the right kind. Uh, there's, there are a lot of details that go into this. It's not just the right power of the lamp that's in there, but it's the flow rate, the, they call it dwell time, like how much time is needed for those microbes to be exposed to that bulb. And then it also has to be the right frequency or type of UV light. So UV A and B aren't gonna kill microbes. They might clean your water, they'll clarify your water, make it look pretty uh, and clear, but it's not gonna kill the microbes. UV C is the one that does that. For more information on that, please check out the FAQ on my website at chestfreezercoldplunge.com. Go down to the part about keeping your water clean and you'll find a link in there to American Aquarium Products and they're going to go into a very deep dive on the science and all the technical things about the, uh, the UV light. If you are going to use UV, you pretty much need to get one that's meant for a pool or a spa in order for that to really do the trick. And if you do that, guess what? You're going to have to plumb it. It requires plumbing. They usually have big connections on there and then you're going to have a pretty large amount of equipment inside the chest freezer or possibly outside, but if uh, we refer back to the previous video about pumps and plumbing and filters, uh, putting that on the outside, there's a great risk of the chest freezer being damaged. If you put holes in the wall or floor, you could kill or uh, puncture a chiller line and you've got a dead chest freezer on your hands. Heat gain is another problem with the temperature outside. And then the third problem is that you will now have moisture or condensation because of the difference in temperature between the cold water inside and the warmer air outside. So UV is not really my favorite thing. Ozone is the thing I love. So I have gone through a number of probably five different ozone generators and I love the idea of ozone, but I almost gave up because they weren't working. I was having all these problems. I had the external hot tub pump and filter set up and um, it, it was just it was just a huge issue. And I didn't want to have all the plumbing running through the walls. You know, I had actually plumbed it through the floor. I built this uh, <laughs> decking and everything to raise it up to do that. And it was a huge amount of work. It was the most expensive failure I ever had. And I almost gave up until I found this company called Jet Engineering. And they have an ozone generator that they make. It's meant for spas, rainwater tanks, uh, you know, small like cowboy hot tubs or pools. And it has a built-in pump. So the cool thing about that, I mean, you can see it right over here. So that's my Jet 203. I've been using this since uh, 2018 now. And what I love about it is that I usually go about eight to 10 months before I change my water. And I only do that then to uh, clean the liner and just make sure that you know there's no condensation underneath the liner. So, uh, but we've got people that are going 12 plus months uh, just running ozone. And you only need to run that for about 30 minutes a day. And uh, they only change their water once every you know, year. It'd probably be a good idea just to change it once a year anyway. You still need to clean your filter on a regular basis. That filter needs to be changed or cleaned or replaced once every one to four weeks, somewhere in there. Don't go any longer than four weeks without changing or cleaning the filter. I want to give you some quick clarification about ozone generators that are meant for kitchen use. They're cheap. You can find them on Amazon. You can get them quickly. They're fairly easy to set up and they do not work very well at all for our purpose. So here's the thing about these kitchen ozone generators. Think about it this way. First of all, you've got an ozone generator that is designed to ozonate about eight ounces of water. And when you try to use it for 75 gallons of water, that's about 1,400 times more water. It's just not up to the task. So the thing is that the pumps in these kitchen use ozone generators can only push ozone through that tube down into about four inches of water. And when you put that tube in 20 or 18 inches of water thereabouts for a cold plunge, it simply does not have the ability to push enough ozone down that tubing into the water. 
that pump is going to burn out a lot faster. The company that makes these kitchen use ozone generators has put a notice on their website advising people do not use this for cold plunges. Why? Because they had a number of people, a growing number of people who are buying them for that purpose, realizing it doesn't work and returning them. And it's just been a really big hassle. The one to use, if you like that company, A to Z Ozone, they're a great company. They have a product called the MP3000. And that one is designed for water and it is designed to push ozone down into the water that is in a cold plunge. So I have a link for that product in the description. I also have a link for the JED203. I'm an official reseller for the JED203 ozone generator, and I am an affiliate for A to Z Ozone. So if you have any questions about either one of those products, let me know in the comment section below, and I'll be happy to help you figure out which one is best for you. Typically speaking, the JED has a weatherproof case. It can be used in all different types of environments, and the MP3000, uh, that case is not designed to be outdoors, so it really needs to be in an environment that's protected or very well protected from the elements. I was recommending that JED. I used it. I love the results. I was amazed at how well it worked and how clean my water was and how long it stayed clean. And that just removed all the impediments for me to just you know to open this thing up and just have clean water. There are some cautions about using ozone though. It is harmful for you to breathe it in. There's not a lot of ozone or a high concentration of ozone that's being output by this device, but still you don't want to breathe it in because it could damage your throat or your lungs and it's not good for you. So if you have it set up correctly and uh, there, there are no problems with this, you want to use it in a well-ventilated area, only run it for 30 minutes a day to start with. If uh, the water doesn't stay clean, you can increase that and I'll go into details about that in a different video. Um, and. Uh, you know, and if you if you do smell the ozone, there should be no ozone leaking out of the chest freezer, right? Because you've got everything sealed and it's all inside the chest freezer. And if you run it and set it up correctly, no ozone is leaking out. But you do want to run it about six to eight hours before any pets or people will be in the area. I am a reseller for this now. You can get on other websites, but you know, when you get this from me, I'm going to share with you a 30 minute installation video that walks you through the whole thing about setting it up. I'm going to give you an installation guide, an owner's manual that has a bunch of tips and uh, just ways to use it and everything for specifically for a chest freezer cold plunge. Uh, you can also use these things in a chiller based system. So um, when you buy that from my website, you are not only helping me support our global cold plunge community, but you're also helping me support my family. And I really appreciate your patronage. This completes this uh, little three part series about keeping your water clean. Again, if you have any questions, let me know, post the comments below, like, subscribe, all of that good stuff, and stay tuned for more videos that will be coming out on other topics about creating not only chest freezer cold plunges, but chiller-based systems. If you have any questions about sanitation, please let me know, post them down below in the video. In the description of the video, you'll find a link to my Facebook group, uh, my website, and uh, just some other details in there that can be helpful to you. The Facebook group is free. And if you want more information, you can buy my book, check out my website. There are articles on the website that uh, have go into a lot of detail about things that are helpful for creating chest freezer cold plunges. Have a great day and happy cold plunging.